Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's Lutheran Church here in Bloomington, Minnesota. So glad that you are gathered in worship, whether it is in person or if you are online. And if you are online during our worship time, 8.30 a.m. here on Sunday morning, uh, please go to our um, website, stlukesbloomington.org, and you can download the uh, bulletin and fully participate in worship. A uh, number of announcements. Uh, we have Feed My Starving Children this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. And right now we have four out of the 18 signups filled. So prayerfully consider, take a look at your calendar and invite your friends and family to join us to um, pack some meals for those uh, in need, especially a good portion of those are going to Ukraine refugee, refugees. I got the nod from Craig. Um, a number of families to keep in prayers. We had a wonderful celebration for Chuck Holmes on yes, uh, yesterday. On Friday, we will celebrate the life and resurrection of Rosemary, Rosemary Berger. And then on Saturday, um, celebrate the life and resurrection of Tom Anderson. Um, please keep all of their families in your prayers. And happy Mother's Day. And we have... Uh, Additional flowers in honor of that. Um, the altar flowers are to honor all mothers, those who have stepped in as mothers, those mourning the loss of their mothers, and those with unrealized dreams of becoming mothers. Let us just take a moment to reflect on that, and then we'll continue with our confession. I invite you to stand as you are able. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, risen Lord, we confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Please take a moment of silent reflection for your forgiveness. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing, He Came Down. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house. For all who ever hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Eternal and all merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is Psalm 136. Please read responsively. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who by understanding made the heavens. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth on the waters. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who made the great lights. For his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day. For his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night. For his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate. For his steadfast love endures forever. And rescued us from our foes. For his steadfast love endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh. 
Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. O give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for, there were, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he had raised them from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. So I'm mixing things up. Next week is a good Mother's Day sermon. This week is a good fishing opener sermon. And it actually fits well because if it was a fishing opener sermon, they'd all be fishing. They wouldn't hear the message. So, look at it that way. Apologies to any of the mothers who expected a Mother's Day message. Now, I love fishing. I grew up fishing. Um, Was able to walk to uh, both... um, Little Lake Butamore and Lake Winnebago, and uh, there was a little creek off of the Fox River that wasn't far away. So all my friends and I all enjoyed fishing together. And when we returned home from college after our first year away from one another, one of our friends who had a family cabin said, let's all go up to the cabin and catch up. And so we did. Packed up all of our fishing gear and And uh, then we were, you know, cocky college students. We thought, we just need breakfast and snacks. We'll catch our meal. (laughs) So we got to the cabin. We enjoyed some snacks in the evening and uh, woke up to the next morning with a downpour, a deluge. It was, you couldn't see to the lake because the rain was so hard. Thankfully, we had some breakfast food. So we had some breakfast caught up a little bit more, lunch comes around, still 
no let up in the rain. And his cabin was off in the distance on a uh, stone road that easily washed out. And he said, there's no way we'll get anywhere today. And so we ate the next day's breakfast. And dinner came along, and it was still raining. It had let up just a little bit, and so we thought, we better go fishing. And so we got all our gear on, and we got out into the lake, and we pushed off, and you had to go get beyond the lily pads so your line wouldn't get snagged. And like the disciples, we caught nothing <laughs> for a while, but we didn't give up. And then all of a sudden, we caught a little fingerling, fingerling. And Chris, who it was his cabin, said, keep it. <laughs> and slowly we built up, and we had a fish fry to satisfy our hunger. Not what we expected. We left early the next morning. <laughs> Disciples were also struggling to catch fish until a voice from the shore hollered, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. The disciples meet Jesus again for the first time. This is our post-Easter series, meeting Jesus again for the first time. Six post-resurrection meetings in the last two chapters of the book of John. There were encounters with Mary Magdalene at the tomb, who was called to go and tell the disciples. The disciples in the upper room who receive a word of peace and are told, as I, as I have been sent, so you shall be sent also. And then Thomas, who wasn't there with the disciples and wouldn't believe them. But Jesus came to him, also offered him peace, and allowed him to see his hands and his side to prove that it was him. But after that encounter, what happens? They go back to their old ways. We don't know how much time is in between from when Jesus uh, was with Thomas and the others to when they find themselves in the fishing boat with nothing. Now remember, these are the same disciples who deserted and denied Jesus, heard about some, some of them heard and some saw the empty tomb and yet they didn't rejoice. Instead, they were still gripped with fear and went into hiding. And when Thomas, who was missing, as I said, he didn't want to believe until Jesus came to him. But imagine that morning. I would have loved to see it all happen. Just a side note, the image of Peter dressing himself in order to jump into the lake is comedic. Peter is no longer afraid, but joyous. In his eagerness to meet Jesus, he put his clothes on to swim ashore instead of waiting for the boat to haul in the fish to get there. The consensus of scholarly opinion is that this entire chapter 21 is a postscript or an epilogue to the gospel or proof of the last two verses in chapter 20. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, like the stories that we are reading these next three weeks. The miraculous catch of fish echoes back to Jesus' first miracle, turning water into wine, which also caused an epiphany. And both are miracles of abundance. Both identify a need, and Jesus meets it. Abundance. How many people are there on the shore? Go back and check, and I count eight, including Jesus. And the writer indicates there's 153 fish. It is loaves and fishes all over again. There is an abundance, and thus what Jesus blesses us with is meant to be shared. There is no way they could eat all that fish. That would be gluttonous. Let it rot, that would be irresponsible. They knew what to do with the great catch. They were fishermen. Some commentators believe the disciples used it to fund their renewed ministry, returning to be fishers of men, sharing with all people the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus. 
The one who calls, offers peace, is understanding, and blesses us with abundance. Marcus Borg writes, The story of discipleship is not just about the past. Not just about them. It's about us. Discipleship means eating at his table and experiencing his banquet, an inclusive banquet that includes those who others would exclude. Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 in the wilderness was like God feeding Israel in the wilderness in the Exodus story on their way to the promised land. Journeying with Jesus means to be in community, an alternative community. It is not meant to be an individual path, but a company of people. One of the primary roles of being church, we gather together. Our psalm is shared, was meant to be spoken by the people, and that is why we did the responsive reading. For his steadfast love endures forever. In his steadfast love, the Lord remembers us in our lowest state, rescues us from our foes, who gives food to all flesh, uh, gives thanks to the Lord, the God in heaven. That is what the disciples are experiencing. If we take time to remember, that is what the Lord does for us, will we, as I have been sent, so I send you, do the same for others, including those who might desert us, deny, betray, those who think differently or are disagreeable, or act in what we would deem displeasing or even devastating? And the Lord does this by working through us. gives food to all flesh. We just heard the announcement. This Saturday, 9 a.m., feed my starving children for those who have little that they might have enough. We do that through our monthly loaves and fishes. We do that weekly as donations come in, even midweek, for Veep, for our community food shelf, for me through Meals on Wheels. And another announcement for later this month, now that they are back up and running, we are going to serve again with the Sandwich Guy, which is now called the 363 Ministry. He only takes two days off a year, Christmas and Easter. Otherwise, he's out on the street. We will make 300 of about the 2,000 sandwiches that he distributes night nightly to the homeless and the hungry, living on the streets along with the help of 21 Twin City partner organizations that also serve the homeless and individuals and families in urgent need. Hear this list. Salvation Army, Harbor Light Safe Bay, Catholic Charities, Higher Ground, Union Gospel Mission, Avio, Good in the Hood, Park Harbor Homeless Ministry, Shelf of Hope, Weight House, Hope Recovery, Bread of Life Church, Francis Franciscan Brothers of Peace, St. Vincent de Paul, Sharing and Caring Hands, Hospitality House, Little Earth Community, Marie Sandvik Center, Urban Ventures, Mom's Dad's Pro, Mad Dad's Program. There's an abundance of social agencies because there's an overwhelming need. But God feeds all flesh. We too are sent to feed the hungry. And in doing so, maybe, just maybe, someone will meet Jesus again for the first time, or even the first time. And they will echo like us. God's steadfast love endures forever. And I have one more announcement showing the generosity of this congregation. Thank you to the members and friends of St. Luke's who stepped up. We were asked to prayerfully consider supporting Ukrainian refugees. About $3,500 was gathered, and through St. Luke's mission, we matched that, sending $7,000 3500 to Lutheran Disaster Relief and 3500 to the Lutheran Immigration Refugee Services, both who have direct contact with people 
who are in need, um, refugees of Ukraine. That's what it's meant to live as people of God. Recognize your abundance. I will make a bet of all of my money, unless you just moved or you're moving, that when you go home today, that you have cupboards full and a refrigerator with probably some stuff rotten away. Well, there are people who have need. Jesus saw that the disciples caught nothing. And remember, before they even got to shore with the haul of fish, he had fish on the fire for them and bread, giving of himself so that they might give themselves so that others might know God's steadfast love endures forever. Amen. I invite us to stand as you're able and join us in singing Love Divine, All Love Excelling, number 631 in the back of your hymnal.
us join in a statement of our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing with all the witnesses of the resurrection, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open our eyes to see the presence of Christ in our midst. Open our hearts to receive forgiveness, grace, and hope. Open our mouths to proclaim, it is the Lord. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. Protect the oceans, lakes, and waterways of your creation. Help us to maintain the beaches and coastlands for the joy of all. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. Break the bonds of oppression and the cycles of violence. Grant wisdom and humility to all in positions of authority, making them advocates for all who have no voice. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. Bless all who cry to you. Shelter those who live in danger. Comfort the lonely. Heal the sick. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. By your presence, strengthen this congregation to follow you. Help us tend to those who are hungry and in need throughout our community the world, and the world. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. Close, clothe us with joy so that our mourning turns into dancing and our sorrow turns into rejoicing. Bless all who mourn and grant us courage and faith to see life even in the midst of death. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. In resurrection hope, we commend to you all for whom we pray, trusting in the promise of new life through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the prayer our Lord, our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this time of reflection and response, you are invited to fill out your welcome card, share any reflections, questions, or prayers on the back. Also take this time to prepare your offering. For those gathered, on, uh, uh, gathered the collection plates are in the front and back. For those online, please go to the, our website, stlukesbloomington.org, and there is a link to give at the bottom of every page. Enjoy this time.
Thank you very much. You may be seated. I invite um, Peter Sundet, uh, Peter, Paul Sundet. I've been talking about Peter all morning. Um, uh, as we continue our council introductions, and um, please share your words. Good morning, everyone, and uh, happy Mother's Day, moms. Um, my name is Paul Sundet. I was uh, voted in as uh, uh, the new treasurer this, uh, this year, so it's a two-year term, and um, I serve on both the executive committees and uh, the church council. Um, I thought I'd share a little bit about, you know, how I came to St. Luke's. Um, it was 14 years ago that uh, my wife Michelle and I were engaged looking for a home church, and um, you know, we walked through these doors, and uh, we were checking out churches, and um, in, in the narthex, we found a welcoming, you know, growing community. People came and talked to us, and uh, that's really our first memories of St. Luke's is out in the, out in the narthex with the welcome desk, so it was very nice. Um, <clears throat> so kind of, you know, how to, what was my path to treasure? I was, uh, you know, a member for a few years, kind of sitting in the pew thinking I need to, need to be more involved, you know? And what's my talent? <laughs> I don't, I don't sing. I don't, uh, I don't play an instrument. So I, uh, I joined the stewardship committee. That was uh, quite a few years ago, and learned about all the the stewardship activities in the church. And uh, I started serving communion. And then I realized I could, you know, lecture. I, I did public speaking in my engineering job, so I was experienced with that. I can, I can do that. And then I asked a few finance questions, and all of a sudden I was on the finance committee, and uh, <laughs> and I elected, got elected treasurer. So, um, you know, it's been a big learning experience. I've been on the job two months now. Um, you know, my main responsibility is to give timely financial updates to the committees, so we can make good decisions um, for the direction of the church as we come out of COVID. We have a hundred-year anniversary in a year, so you know, a lot of decisions to make to make sure we we stay healthy as a as a church, and um, I'll be a lot busier in the fall with, with budgeting for the next year, um, but I'm thankful for a good budget and uh, thankful for you know good giving, uh, strong giving this year, so um, your new treasurer gets to start out with good news of, of a budget surplus, so, so thank you for that. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Now I invite us to, uh, to stand. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with one another. Uh, with the sign of a wave, for those of you who are online, this would be a wonderful time for you to share a comment or, or a uh, chat of peace. But most of all, may we go out as people of peace and share the good news of God with um, all people. Now. May God, who brought, has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing, O Living Bread from Heaven, number 542.
Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.